risk. You understand how this thing is working? The moment there is any funnies or embedded derivatives, that's when we fall out of SPPI. That's what IFRS 9 says. Now, I, I put for you in, what, 15 minutes, what they tried to explain in, in, what, 80 pages, right? But I hope you appreciate it. I've tried to simplify it. Do you understand that? So that's the big thing in IFRS 9 from the amortized cost side. Can you reclassify from amortized cost to fair value? You know what the standard says? Yes, you can. But you know what? We think it's going to be very, very infrequent. The only time you can change from a fair value to amortized cost is if you change your business model. And we don't think people are going to change their business models every day. It's not going to happen. So there's no manipulation. And in fact, even if you do change, there's a massive anti-avoidance thing there. So let's say you, you decide to change your business model on the 2nd of February of a year. It says, okay, fine, do that, but you can only account for the change from the following year, 1st of January. So you account for it prospectively from the first day of the first reporting period following the change in the business model. So that year is still going to be affected or impacted by your existing model. So the anti-avoidance. So if you are trying to hide something, sorry, you can't. We're going to see it. Next year you can change things. All right, so that's how it works there. Embedded derivatives, there's also a change. Small, small change here on IFRS 9. IFRS 9 says if you have a financial asset, which is in the scope of IFRS 9, and it has an embedded derivative, hey, listen, don't separate it. Don't waste your time. Measure the whole thing at fair value through profit or loss. However, if you have a lease with an with embedded derivative, you know what, you still have to separate but you know what, before, where, where you would treat the loan at amortized cost and the embedded derivative at fair value through profit or loss, gone. Gone. You have to treat the whole loan, if it's got an embedded derivative or embedded feature in it, at fair value through profit or loss. Investments in equity instruments. Now, this is where the controversy starts. All equity instruments have to be measured at fair value. Remember this. Equity instruments will not meet health to collect and won't meet SPPI. A share doesn't pay you principal and interest. It doesn't. The dividend you get on a share is not linked to time value or credit risk. It's linked to performance. So shares are always going to be measured at fair value. You know, this little sentence here, exception to carry uncoated equity in investments whose fair value cannot be determined reliably at cost eliminated, let me put it to you in plain, simple English. You can't use the cost method anymore. Halas. Before, what we used to do in IS39, or IS39 said that if you have unquoted equity instruments, and if you try really, really hard, and you can't get a fair value, then you can use cost. Now, how we used to read it, if we have unquoted equity instruments, we must use cost. But IS39 you say you, you must try really hard to determine a fair value. Because people didn't try hard enough, the standard says, listen, you've got to, go. you've got to get fair value for unquoted equity instruments. Now, people don't like this, but the reality is, now let me tell you what the standard said to themselves. This is Bob telling me this himself. They say, listen, you can get a fair value of every, even your unquoted equity instrument. What is fair value? Fair value is how much somebody in the market would pay for it. You holding the asset, why are you holding the asset if you don't know what it's worth? If you don't know what the asset is worth, why do you have it? Why did you buy it? If you were going to buy that asset again, how much would you pay? Using market data. So they believe, the standard setter firmly believes that fair value is determinable for almost anything. Because if you're going to sell it, now fair value is hypothetical. So they're saying fair value is determinable. If you're going to sell it, if you're holding it, why are you holding it? If it's got no value, why are you holding it? Why you wasted your shareholders' money if it's worth only its cost? That's the reality. So big, first big change you've got to pick up on shares, cost method gone. Uncoated equity instruments need to be measured. Then there's this new thing. Wow. There's a new category called fair value through OCI. Now people love this. <laughs> this was again a concession. I, there is no, I can't give you any technical reason why they keep to me, it's a nonsense. But they put it in. Fair value through OCI 
They say, okay, you may have shares. Shares can only be measured, equity instruments can only be measured at fair value. But we'll allow you to park that fair value changes into equity. So everyone says, yes, AFS is back. No, it isn't. AFS is not back. Let's talk about this fair value through OCI. We only get into fair value through OCI if it's not held for trading. Irrevocable election at initial recognition. Irrevocable. So once you put it into this fair value through OCI, it stays there forever. You can do it on an individual instrument basis. So you can do it for your Citibank shares. You can choose not to do it for your HSBC shares if you're holding a banking portfolio. So you can pick and choose which ones you want to do. But here's the humdinger. When you sell it, no gain or loss in the income statement. Nothing. No recycling. No impairment, fine. No recycling. No recycling. Whatsoever. Interesting, eh? Dividends still recognized in the income statement. And you know what? Because the standard setter knows that this is a suspicious categorization, if you decide to put something into fair value through OCI, there's a hell of a lot of disclosure that IFRS 7 asks you to put. Because what, we, what that will do, it will allow a user to compare your, finance, your, your portfolio. They actually want you to name the share. What IFRS 7 is saying, name the share that you put into this fair value through OCI. Because we want to see how much you are hiding in this OCI. Your question, no, it is not the same as available for sale. <laughs> Let me tell you some differences. Available for sale was in IS39, fair value through OCI, IFRS 9. Obvious, isn't it? But available for sale, you could have for debt or equity instruments. This new category called fair value through OCI, only for equity instruments. You can't use it for debt instruments. Fair value changes taken to OCI. Fair value changes taken to OCI. Impairment losses. When would we have impairment on AFS, significant or prolonged? Was recognized in our income statement. Fair value through OCI. No impairment. Nothing. Nothing ever goes to the income statement ever. So no worry about impairment. When sold and available for sale, OCI is recycled to PL. Fair value through OCI. No recycling to PL ever. Ever, ever, ever. Even if you make tons of profit on it, you don't take it to the income statement. Your earnings per share will never enjoy the benefit of that gain or the loss. You understand this? Yes, within equity, you may transfer it from one, the AFS reserve or the fair value of OCI reserve to retain earnings, but the reality is you're never going to get it in the income statement ever. You're measuring it at fair value, but the income statement never picks it up. Dividend income in the income statement. I just did a little bit of a mapping, mapping for me. <laughs> what, what things might be under the old and the new standard? Blue blocks, IS39, orange blocks, IFRS9. If something was a loan in receivable under IS39, it's very likely to be amortized cost, unless the payments are not principal and interest. If something was held to maturity, very likely to be amortized cost, unless the payments are not solely payments of principal and interest. If you had a trading instrument under IS39, you know what? It can only be fair value to profit or loss, even if it's equity. If something was available for sale, they say, wait a minute, wait, we have to split the debt and equity. If it says debt, it could be amortized cost or it could be fair value. If it's equity, fair value through OCI or fair value through profit and loss. That's the way you map IFRS 9 to IS 39. With all other measurement things, when, how do you look at what definition of fair value you use? Because IFRS 9 is incomplete, you've got to go back to IS 39. Because the definition of amortized cost has not been adjusted to the IFRS 9, you go back to IS 39. All right. When is this effective from? Currently, 1st January 2013. Early adoption is permitted. Now, we have had a lot of clients in the Middle East early adopt IFRS 9. Now, I'll tell you why they early adopted IFRS 9. Here is their simple reason. Not because they wanted technical purity and wanted to have HTC and SPPI. They forgot or they didn't book the impairment loss on their AFS equity portfolios. Prices kept on going down. Now, if you early adopt IFRS 9, guess what happens? It's a retrospective statement.